Hi everyone, this is a video about biofilms. Uh, someone posted on one of my other, a question on one of my other videos. I'm saying, how would someone know if they have biofilms? I have chronic sinusitis. Um, thanks for your content. You're welcome. Thanks for en engaging in my content. Uh, so as per usual, nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. Um, so um, it's a really great question. You know, how would you know you have biofilms? We talked about biofilms in the context of chronic sinus issues, uh, systemic infections with uh, microbes like Borrelia and Bartonella, Babesia, etc. Um, Mold-related biofilms, which would be typically more in the sinuses, but maybe in other places. Um, and then also with uh, gut microbial overgrowth like SIBO and LIBO and things like that. But um, how, how do we know if we have biofilms or not? And it's unfortunately not a very satisfying answer to the question, but um, really it comes down to a clinical um, assessment, um, a clinical determination of if a person has biofilms. Um, and what, it, what that ultimately comes down to is, or what that ultimately boils down to is, there is no um, objective laboratory test that we can easily access to determine if somebody has biofilms. Um, to my understanding, the research literature looking at biofilms is typically just done in a research setting. Um, my understanding of it, and if anyone listening knows the, something to the contrary to be the case, please post because I'm you know, interested to know more about it. If uh, there's other information out there I'm not aware of. But uh, to my understanding, the only way to assess for biofilms is to actually do a biopsy of the tissue that has um, suspected biofilms on it and then analyzing it in that regard. Uh, I'm not aware of any commercially available test where you can do some like sinus scraping or some other like stool test or something like that where you can find evidence of biofilm. Um, <clears throat> so. Now, with that being said, as I'll mention in, in a minute, um, I think there are some roundabout ways to glean whether a person has an issue with biofilms. But generally, um, it's really something where uh, it, it's more of a clinical assessment. So what do I mean by that more specifically? <clears throat> so say a person, say one of my patients has um, chronic sinus issues. Let's say we they have a known history of mold exposure, let's say, and I um, know or suspect that there's some mold colonization. So either clinically it makes sense because they have a positive mycotoxin test, they were in a moldy environment, they have a lot of congestion, um, or maybe we did a sinus swab and culture and we cultured mold out of their sinuses. So either way, let's say there's mold um, in the sinuses uh, we've been, uh, and we're wondering, well, is there a biofilm component? Well, if we were working with an antimicrobial nasal spray, say a diluted um, essential oil nasal spray, like Frank sense essential oil or we were working with say a silver based nasal spray or they're working with some other type of antimicrobial nasal spray and they're feeling better but then they hit a plateau and there's uh, especially if they're still having some congestion symptoms well they wouldn't necessarily have to maybe they're just having their uh, you know ongoing issues with fatigue and pain and they've got maybe no congestion left let's say or maybe they didn't have congestion in the first place because it's not a prerequisite um, to having sinus colonization um, but they're improving and then they hit a plateau that could be a clue that there's a biofilm um, so, the, so the nasal spray has been helping, but they hit a plateau at that point, um, unless there was some other variable that made more sense at the time, I would probably recommend they go on a biofilm disrupting nasal spray and see if that got them over the plateau. And if they go on that biofilm disrupting nasal spray and they feel better, it's a good sign or good indication or good likelihood that there was probably a biofilm. Or if they start to flare from it, suggesting we're breaking down the biofilm too quickly, those would be two clinical clues to suggest that we were indeed dealing with a biofilm. <clears throat> Another scenario might be a person's feeling a lot better from their nasal spray. They feel great from it. Maybe they're doing other treatments as well. Um, but it seems that the uh, nasal spray has made a big difference. They, uh, they feel, and they feel all better. Uh, they start to wean off the nasal spray and then their symptoms start to come back might be because there's a biofilm component. Um, and so it'd be a similar type of scenario where we'd bring in a biofilm disruptor, feel better or feel worse because we're breaking it down too quickly. That would also be um, some good evidence that we're probably dealing with a biofilm. There may be cases where <clears throat> we felt very, very confident that there's some type of microbial colonization, but antimicrobials just aren't doing anything. So antimicrobial nasal spray is not doing anything. And it may be a rare case where we need to start off with a biofilm disruptor to actually get any headway in the first place. I've seen that a couple of times in practice, but that's quite unlikely, but it, it is a, a plausible um, scenario. And those would be the main uh, reasons that we, uh, the main uh, clinical clues that we would be dealing with a biofilm. If we're working with systemic, uh, if there's an issue with systemic microbes um, or gut microbes, there might be other clues we'd be looking for, but the gist of it with those scenarios too would be hit a plateau, might be due to a biofilm. Um, uh, 
improvement, but then relapse when treatment stops um, might be a biofilm. Um, in, and there could be a case, maybe not quite akin to what I said at first, where you know nasal spray does nothing, but we our um, nasal spray does nothing, uh, but then we bring in a biofilm disruptor and then that actually gets the ball rolling with things. So kind of akin to that would be, if we wanted to know just out of the gate, is there a biofilm issue going on? Um, we could start a person off on a biofilm disrupting nasal spray and see what happens. And if the patient flares like crazy, then probably a biofilm issue. If they start getting better, wouldn't be a guarantee that it's not, um, that, that there's a biofilm because many of the biofilm disruptors, as to my experience, typically have antimicrobial properties or have um, antimicrobial components in there. So for example, silver nasal spray, good biofilm disruptor, but silver is, you know, in my experience, very good at killing viruses, very good at killing bacteria, it's so-so at killing mold. Um, but if the person's feeling better, well, maybe it's because they had a bacterial sinusitis and that's what was causing it, or maybe they had Marcon's and that's what was causing it. So, um, but. That, that would be another way of sussing out whether there might be a biofilm disruptor, just to maybe a little bit more ambiguous, depending on uh, if there wasn't a flare out of the gate. Um, what I was alluding to earlier was saying, well, there might be some objective laboratory testing. Um, and that's where I actually had a patient earlier today where we were looking at the um, their uh, stool test for large intestine bacterial overgrowth. Nothing to do with sinuses, but just bear with me. Um, and they had a retest, and they've been clinically doing better. It'd be slow progress. Uh, we actually just recently found out that they have exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, and enzymes are making a big difference for them. Um, so that's uh, it, probably more of a component in why we were seeing slower progress. But anyways, the patient having slower progress, uh, but but feeling better. We've been working with gut antimicrobials, but they were working like really really slowly what's going on there um, so we did a retest to see what the levels look like and the level of levobacteria that came back was even higher um, than the previous test and in my clinical experience that can be a clue that there are biofilms afoot when it looks like we were treating for a while and then the test results come back even higher like it looks like it's even a worse problem even though the patient's feeling better we've been working with antimicrobials in my clinical experience that, that can be a clue that there's a biofilm issue <clears throat> so I've seen that in SIBO cases where we do a lactulose breath test results come back showing you know let's say up to 40 parts per million hydrogen gas or something like that. Start treatment, patient's doing better, but hit a plateau or isn't improving fast enough. Uh, we do a retest and we see now they're going up to 60 or 80 parts per million. What's going on here? The patient's doing better. Why are the results looking worse? Well, uh, my assumption in those cases is that it's a biofilm disruption issue, uh, or rather the biofilms are starting to break down slowly but surely and really seeing the more curves into the open. It's actually an even bigger problem than we thought it was in the first place, but now things are getting chased out of those biofilms. Um, as far as trying to assess something like that with a nasal, like with a sinus overgrowth issue, that would be kind of a trickier thing to do. You might be able to suss that out with doing some repeated nasal cultures potentially. We've certainly seen that before with um, mycotoxin levels, like a urine mycotoxin level, showing there's, you know, say, aspergillus species mold, treat for a while, patient's doing better, do a retest, the levels are even higher now. Although there's some uh, ambiguity there, where is it because we're breaking down biofilms or the biofilms are, you know, kind of going away and releasing more microbes, uh, mold into the open, or is it that as we get rid of the micro, as we're treating the mold, um, the uh, hepatocytes, like the liver cells, are actually working better. Glutathione reserves are coming back online. Um, overall excretory functions are doing better, and the patient can just detoxify the mycotoxins more effectively. So we can actually pick those up in the um, test samples more effectively because there's just more um, processing happening. So there's, again, a little bit of ambiguity there. But I think there, uh, the take-home message with the lab testing is that, um, in my opinion, I believe that we can glean some insight into whether there's biofilms afoot um, based on um, some laboratory findings, but it's not as cut and dry as we'd like it to be. Um, so thank you for the question. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments on this topic, please post in the comment section below. And if there's questions about anything else, feel free to post in the comment section below, and I will leave it there for now.